Hi guys, welcome to the Mass Tutorial brought to you by Direct Tutoring. Today we're going to have a look at a cast diagram. Now this video isn't going to do any trig examples, this is just an in-depth analysis on how the cast diagram works. So taking a quick overview, the cast diagram is part of the trigonometry topic in maths. It's a way of calculating related angles to solve trig equations. There are a set of rules which must be applied to each quadrant. So the, the cast diagram is split into four different sections and we'll see that in just a second. And we will use the trig graphs, the sine and the cos graph, to illustrate how the cast diagram will work and where we come up with the positive and negative values. So, if we consider the sine graph and the cosine graph, we're going to need these a little later on. But the cast diagram revolves around these two curves. Now, the tan graph is also included, but in terms of the National 5 course, we don't consider the graph. We only use the sine and the cos graph. So the cast diagram. As I said before, the cast diagram is made up of four sections. One entitled C, the other A, S and T to spell cast. Now, each of these lines, starting from the lower right, is 0 degrees up to 90 degrees, as you can see, 90 degree angle in here. Then all the way around to 180, around to 270, and then back to 360 degrees. So this really represents a circle as well. So A means that all three, sine, cos, and tan, are positive within this quadrant. S, this section, only sine is positive, tan and cos are negative. In the T section, I'm sure you've guessed that tan is positive and sine and cos are negative. And then the C section, the cos is positive and the sine and the tan are both negative. And that's really what we just highlight here, that when sine is positive in this section here, tan and cos are negative and this applies again to the other two quadrants A is all three of them are positive so there are a set of calculations that you will have to do when you find your initial angle and in your trig equation so between 0 and 90 degrees this will be the angle that you find then if we are dealing with the sine section, we take 180 degrees and minus the angle because the maximum angle here, from here to here, is 180. And if we go into the T section, then the T section has 180 plus the angle because it's now 180 plus the angle, bearing in mind that the angle cannot be any more than 90 degrees, so that's why it takes us up to 270. And then it's 360 minus the angle in the C section, because the maximum angle is 360, and we have to take that away from the angle that we found. So that is the basics of how the graph works. That's what we need to remember. However, we're going to look at how these values came about because if you understand this then it makes using the cast diagram so much easier and in general trig itself so you can see here that the highlighted angles are 0, 90, 180, 270, 360 so they're the most important so what I'm going to do is on the graphs I'm going to put lines through each of these key angles so we're going to split the graph up into four different sections. Now, in the A section, all three are positive. So let's check. So between 0 and 90 degrees, both the sine graph and the cos graph are in the positive region of the chart. Then if we look at the S section, which is sine is positive, 
Then here we can see that the sine section is above zero. However, this time the cos is in the negative region, hence why cos is negative. In the T section, we don't have the, the tan graph here, but as we can see that the sine and the cos graph are both in the negative region. Hence why they two are both negative. And then finally, the last quadrant, sine is negative and cos is positive. And we can see that from the graph, that the cos here is positive region, and in the sine graph it is in the negative region between 270 and 360. So that is where this these values basically come from. Now, when you solve these questions, a lot of the time they might ask you to rank values in order of their size. Now, you can use a cast diagram, but the easiest way to do it is to use the sine and the cosine graphs, and that will help you visualize it that little bit more. So, in a quick summary, this is the cast diagram that you will have to remember. You will get plenty of practice in using this, in writing this, and using these equations in here. And the key thing a lot of the time is people get these two mixed up. But just remember, in the S quadrant, it cannot be any more than 180 degrees. So, it must be 180 minus. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Leave any comments in the comment section below. I'll put a link in the description to the trigonometry questions which you can use this video in conjunction with those to help you solve some tricky trigonometry questions. We'll see you in the next video.